Hi, my name is Anissa Sheikh. I'm with Chris Gordon on Hell Blazer Biz. Well, I have the absolute honor and privilege of the company of Anissa Sheikh today, uh, a young singer songwriter from Michigan. So Thanks hey. for having me. <laughs> no, no, you're welcome. Thanks. I really appreciate you coming on. It's been great. It's lovely to meet you and it's great to have you on. Uh, so here's, Thank you, uh, too, as well. No, you're welcome. We, I know you've released a new song today, um, which is absolutely phenomenal. It's uh, the new normal. It's called New Normal. And no. it, yeah, and it was really, I've got to say, I did watch, I mentioned it before, I watched the video and I thought it was an absolutely beautiful song and the video is really poignant as well. So, um, yeah, we'll get on to that later, but yeah, it's... it's <laughs> Thank you. Congrats. I'm sure that'll be a huge hit. Excellent. So first things first, Anissa, I'm going to just find out a bit about yourself as well. So you were born in Kentucky and you've got four brothers and sisters, is it? <laughs> so yeah, you, I'm the youngest, youngest of many, many siblings. I have five. I have, I'm the youngest of five siblings. All right, cool. How did you feel? How does it feel being the youngest? Did you have to, did it make well, you want to push harder? Well, I wouldn't know how it would be to be the oldest. Uh -huh. But I like being the youngest. I definitely <laughs> don't see an issue with it. Excellent, excellent. And I mean, you, it's not just the music that you're into as well, because obviously I'm looking here, growing up, you, you started off really, really good, or you still are probably a really good skater. So like by the age of nine, you're like traveling eight hours, or you're doing eight well, hours training. A my day older hour. sisters all figure skated very competitively. So I followed oh, in their cool. footsteps and figure skated as well. And that's kind of where my music inspiration comes from. Mm-hmm. It comes from being exposed to so many different styles and um, music from music for my older sisters skating to different genres of music, and that's kind of where I took that like creative aspect from skating and made it into my music in a way. Fantastic! That's really really good. Uh, um, great to hear. Um, because I said was one of the things was going to be where, where did you get that inspiration from? And, uh, and figure skating, you're right. They do sort of come on, and um, yeah, they just. It's just, I love watching things. Yeah, from classical music that you can skate to, to all the way to Santana and mm. different genres in between. It's, it's very, it's a sport that has a lot of musicality with it. It does, yeah. Santana, you know, you've mentioned one of my favorites. <laughs> my just, favorite. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely fantastic. Um, so what kind of, you know, as you say, you, you grew up doing skating. You're just so much um, when you were younger and obviously with your sisters as well. So. What pulled you away from that, uh, continuing on that path and, be, you know, becoming like a, a pro skater? And what pulled you into the music? Well, I love music so much. And I feel like it's my, like, I was put on this earth to make music and share my experiences through songwriting and relate to others by performing and connecting with audiences just through song lyrics. And so that's what I feel like I was put on this earth to do. And I love doing it, so I might as well stick to it. Now, like, instead of figure skating, I thought to myself, there's only so much time in one day, time's a constraint. So I can't go to school, I can't figure skate, and I can't do music full time. I can't be the jack of all trades, the master of none. So I yeah. did, narrowed it down to music because that's something that is unique and exclusive to me, and it's something I will want to do the rest of my life. Oh, that's really nice to hear. And you're right, you, you know, you, you, when you've got you're so multi-skilled like that as well, to, to find your own car, your own path in life as well, uh, and follow like that, the passion that you have inside of you, um, which is, it just sounds like you definitely have with the music side. Thank you. You're welcome. Do you have any inspirations at all? Anyone you followed or, or, or sort of look up to? Definitely. Um, I, I look up to Jewel because she's a, you know, Jewel, 19, late 1990, early 2000 artist. Mm -hmm. And I look up to her because she utilized her skills and talent in music to pave her own career path and her own life path. She had a lot of tough times and hardships growing up, being away from her family at Interlocked In Academy and here in Michigan, actually, to learn the art of songwriting and performing in music, but her family were not um, was not like able to bring her back home during school holidays mm -hmm. to visit, and so she was able to perform at different bus stops across the U.S. and make her own money to travel. And yeah. now that she she the thing that's 
I admire is the fact that she found her passion. She turned in her purpose and she was able to give back now as she's an established artist by creating many foundations and scholarships for children and teenagers that were in her position as well. And so that's why she, as a person, really inspires me. But her music does also because I sing and I songwrite with my guitar. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because whenever I sing just with my guitar, like a campfire setting almost, (laughs) people say, oh, you kind of sound like Jewel. And I go, well, that's a big compliment. So that's why I really like her. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. And I, I don't know who she was. Yeah, she was very, yeah, very inspirational. I've I'm not, didn't know some of her backstory. Though. That was that's really fascinating to hear that she, you know, she's travel around and just and bust yeah. to make her money to get there. That's <laughs> uh, and talking about the foundation as well, which I will go into as well because that's something else you've got in common <laughs> in, in a similar way. Um, so I mean, obviously. Your first single was Bad Thing, I believe. And, you know, Bad over, Thing. Mm-hmm. over 138,000 YouTube views. I dream of that. That's fantastic. Which is crazy Congrats. because yeah. it was just a scholarship I was awarded at the International Model and Tal Association mm-hmm. Convention last July 2019. Yeah. And I had no, I never really recorded it in a professional environment like that mm-hmm. and shot a music video before and got through the steps of releasing my own very first single to the public. And so that was, that was a unique process. It was very um, informational, I guess you could say. <laughs> <laughs> well, fantastic. I say, yeah, the, the amount of hits that came back was just phenomenal. It's just, it's, you know, Thank you. to get anything on YouTube nowadays, it's, I struggle. Uh, it's, it's very just, saturated. It's, it is, yeah. It's you know brilliant, and there's so much music out there. So yeah, to to find that voice and find your voice on that channel is is amazing. It really mm-hmm. truly is. Um, so with all this stuff that you've got going on, you've got you know you've got your sports, you've got your music. What, what do you do to unwind? <laughs> you know what kind mm-hmm. of thing? What do you do to unwind? What do you do? Uh, hobbies or relaxing? How do you get away? From- <laughs> oh, I sing. That's my okay. hobby. That's my relaxation. It's always been like almost my stress reliever yeah. in a way. And um, but I really do love to see my friends, and I like to um, travel a lot. Now I haven't been able to do that because of the pandemic. But that's okay. <laughs> my hobby will resume in a couple of months, hopefully. <laughs> and, but right now, it's just been songwriting a lot. Has been how I've been coping with the pandemic. Okay, yeah, no, I mean that, yeah, and that's vitally important, especially from someone from yourself to be able to uh, and, and put that into a songs, and and it'll help and inspire other people, I think, as well, because these six months for everybody has just been horrendous. <laughs> you know, it's a, what you would call a new normal way of yeah, life. Exactly, for yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, you know, which is true. It's, you know, that's that's how we have to live it now um you know we're here in the uk we've just been told that it's coming back and we've got another one coming as well the second wave is on its way exactly <laughs> it's, it's just not good at all um so obviously we're talking about the new the new normal then <laughs> from bring on to you that's your new single which is released today um and obviously it's on youtube i believe it's on i it's on everywhere isn't it it's on, it's on everything every, every the official music going. videos on youtube i have some behind the scenes clips on my personal youtube page not the vivo one and spotify apple music um google play amazon everywhere <laughs> all the platforms <laughs> that's fantastic that's fantastic if just bear with us. We'll have a little um, watch of a little clip of it now. Um, of course, and, yeah. Uh, let I've seen see. it a million times, but I'll <laughs> see it again. <laughs> Stuck in this 
Okay, so that was great. That was a, a lovely watching that. And hopefully everyone will go out there and um, we'll put up your details. We, you can go and watch. People will watch that and listen and download it. I certainly will. And I'll certainly be listening. I'm, you know, I'm going to be subscribing to you for the future anyway because I think you, you, I really like mm. your music. Um, uh, so you listen to several of the songs that you've done and uh, watch them on YouTube. I was watching them while I was working today from home. And, uh, oh, really thank you so much. It. That means a lot to me. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. It's fantastic. You know, it's, it's nice to see. And the lyrics that you write really are poignant. Um, because obviously you've, you've got the new normal here as well and then Tough Times um, which was another one of your most recent singles that was Tough very Times with that you. message yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah very very personal and it's it's nice it's good to see I mean a, a lot of people write about their their person you know of obviously the feelings but to actually you seem to do you seem to express I'm trying to work out my I can't even express it in my words at the moment but you express it so well well that's like the thing song. when words fail music speaks and so that has to do with music for miracle as well it's when words fail music really does speak and um that's song that's the beauty of songwriting yeah you definitely definitely um I yeah I do find that because yeah I sitting home myself I'm not going to do it on here because it'll embarrass myself my tone deafness <laughs> uh excellent i mean as well as obviously being the song uh songwriter and a, and a singer and working many many hours a day to, to get that going you've actually got your own foundation as well a non-profit organization which you founded mm -hmm. which again sounds such a beautiful thing to have done and again it's obviously inspired by your own personal story um and Definitely. Yeah. What I, I've got the initials here, but if you want to carry on and then tell me what it stands yeah, for, then so it'd be great. Music for Miracle is my nonprofit, and it's an acronym that stands for Music Inspires, Reaches, Accepts, Captures, and Loves Equally. And I truly feel that music does that because I've had my personal experience with it. When my father had a stroke, I would take my guitar and sing for him every single day at his nursing and rehabilitation center. Not because I was trying to uh, help his speech get better. That happened separately at the same simultaneously. But because music was a normality that I would sing from every night before going to bed when he lived with me. And so I thought when everything's changing, I don't want there to be a new normal to him not being able to listen to me play guitar. So that was something consistent I did for him. Now on the physical and medical side of things, there are lots of studies that show that music therapy activates and, and enables areas of the brain are not um, working unless there's like music involved and like singing and the, the rhythms and melodies. And that does help with motor skills and regaining speech after it's lost in a stroke. And so I would sing for him and encourage him to sing along to my songs because the hospital and medical staff said it would be a miracle if he were to ever speak again because his voice was already, um, it was damper. It wasn't the most clearest tone mm -hmm. to it prior to his stroke and the stroke just worse than that. And so I um, would encourage him to hum the ABCs and now it's truly a miracle he can talk again. Wow. And so while I was at the nursing home doing that, all his neighbors and the other elders were saying, um, like, well, why don't you sing for me? So I would go to each room <laughs> and sing for them. And then yeah. during the pandemic, well, before the pandemic, I was invited to sing for St. Jude's Children's Research a hospital here in the United States in Tennessee. And that is to support, um, we actually raised several thousands of dollars singing at this annual showcase to um, support pediatric cancer. Wow. And so that was beautiful, that music. I sang my personal, my own original song called High and Hope. Mm -hmm. And so that was beautiful that I was able to partake in that activity. And then I sang at the Healing Notes Foundation. But the biggest part of the organization is that during the pandemic, when you're not allowed visitors here in the U.S. at nursing homes or hospitals, I was able to organize artists, yet alone myself as well, to um, videotape ourselves at mm -hmm. home, just inside our bedroom, very casual, singing songs of inspiration, whether we wrote, we wrote them or their song, cover songs, yeah. and stream them in each patient's rooms at hospitals across the nation and across where I live in the state of Michigan. And that was beautiful because when you are at, when you're, when you're facing a medical crisis, you are lonely alone, you are alone, vulnerable, and scared, mm -hmm. constantly being told by a medical professional, 
you'll be okay, you'll be okay, is not letting you feel that everything will be okay and letting yeah. you feel the comfort of something going on around you. You're lonely. And music is the feeling that everything will be okay. So that, that was beautiful that I was able to organize that. And that's something I want to do for the rest of my life. I'm, I'm speechless, to be honest. That's, you know, <laughs> for someone to come out and say something like that, it's just absolutely, it's phenomenal. That really Thank is. You. I mean, you must touch so many people's lives with what you Thank do. Thank you. No, you're welcome. And, and I, I do know that from, from obviously my, not my history, but obviously the, the, how much music does help people. I, mean, I know from Music is, coma, I mean, strokes, regardless everything. of like having a health issue, it's why do we listen to music? Yeah, it soothes. It's exactly, it soothes you. It's a feeling like, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It can make you happy. Yeah, you can completely change your mood. I mean, I can go for a bike ride and I've got music on and I'll be... So, like, if you listen to, like, a heavy metal rock song or, like, a ballad, classical piano or a pop song, it just... Exactly, yeah. That's the beauty of it. It is. And I'd have noticed because every now and then I might get the Beautiful South on, which is quite a slow song. And all of a sudden, my cycle pace just slows right down, and I'm just like, you know, mellow. Exactly. Like, oh, yeah. That's what I want. <laughs> so it's great. No, you're. And it's, uh, so yeah, full kudos and, and full credit to you for what you what you are doing with that, and and what you have managed to do over the pandemic, especially with all the conditions that we've had to 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 be able to go out there and and just reach all those people um, and give them some sort of hope uh, and and something to enjoy and listen to uh, while they are suffering so much. It's just phenomenal. Thank you so much. No, no, that's what I want to do. So, <laughs> no, it's great, and, and I'm sure you will carry on doing that for for a long time to come. Because it's just, it's something that I think is needed. Um, and you know, someone as as bright and innovative as yourself could actually, you know, just really take that, and and yeah, may make it your own for the <laughs> for many years to come. Thank you. You're welcome. Something else before the pandemic as well. I, I believe you just entered yourself into into a into a, into a Miss, Miss Teen Michigan pageant. Exactly. And, and came out winning it as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny to think about because I've never done it. That was my first pageant. Mm-hmm. And my second pageant will be in almost a, mount, a month, November 7th, Miss Teen USA and Miss USA. So that's very exciting. Mm-hmm. I signed up for the Miss Michigan Teen USA pageant three weeks prior. I wore like a 13-year-old dress. <laughs> I actually canceled knee surgery for the pageant. Oh, okay. I was supposed to have knee surgery, but I, and I'm okay now. I got knee right. surgery. But yeah, that was it, was, a, it was definitely, I went off on a limb, but I feel like being on the speech and debate team in my high school, um, figure skating and doing some modeling and stuff all came together and went hand in hand with preparation mm-hmm. to the pageant for the pageant. Fair enough, fair enough. And yeah, and winning it, to be honest, that's, it's like, Yeah, that was pretty that was pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> so not only uh, three weeks into it you entered and I'm uh, I'm sure you've probably raised some uh, hackles on a few people <laughs> you know but the first runner up she had the girl who got first runner up yeah. she she signed up two weeks prior as well oh, did she? and so I think we both caused a little bit of issues but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, never mind it doesn't matter you won who cared <laughs> so I'll say that and it also I so mean, yeah I <laughs> know oh, that's right that's really flippant so but good luck with the other ones in november when you get them as well that thank you so much no no you're welcome and obviously uh so just sort of finalize again i just want to bring people back to the new normal which is coming out today for people to go and watch on youtube on your channel or download it from itunes or anything like that um can you give us i don't think i've actually asked you i mean i know what it's about because i've listened to it but can you give us a quick synopsis of that as well yeah so new normal reflects my dynamic relationship with my father from before his stroke and the father-daughter relationship to after his stroke and how the roles reversed and in the song there's definite lyrics that reflect my honest experiences of with like with my father how he would walk me to the school bus and to how I had to take care of him after his stroke. And I feel like it resonates with people, whether they're, they have a similar situation with one of their parents or siblings or family members, but mainly because there's new normals to all aspects of life. And I want people to take away the fact that it's just a new normal change is hard, but nothing is forever. And that we have to accept that. And to really just be grateful and thankful and live in the present and not take things for granted. Fantastic message to give as well. It really is. <laughs> so, um, 
and that, I say, I've watched it, I've seen it, and it, that message comes across. And and you're right, I think it will also reach out. So I talk a lot. <laughs> it will reach out to um, all those people, like you say. Uh, and there are so many people who are young carers, at the, you know, in the world, uh, who just might feel lost and they might feel st- or stuck, you know, uh, they're in this new normal. Just which, not knowing what to do with this yeah. new normal way of life, and just exactly. you have to accept it. And when when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I've used that phrase well <laughs> many times. Excellent. That's brilliant. Okay, thanks. And so, Anissa, I'm going to say in sort of part of, before I stop recording this, is there anything else you would like to pass across to people um, who are watching or listening? Well, other than um, everything that we talked about, because we covered a lot, <laughs> but um, basically, I have new side, new normals acoustic version coming out in two weeks from today. So I'm not, I'm not sure. I think it's October 5th. No, no, October 4th. And um, I, I'm pretty sure, right? Yeah. And then um, every month after that will be a new song. And I have a holiday EP coming out as well. That'll be 2nd of October, I think. I've just had to check it myself. 2nd of October. <laughs> yes. My bad. <laughs> two days to that, yeah. That, no, that's brilliant. Okay, I'll, I'll keep in that. I'm going to subscribe to you. Uh, if I, I think I'll... I'll thought i did before but i don't think i have so i will be subscribing after i've listened to this so yeah it'll be absolutely amazing um thank you so this to carry on and following your career in music because you really are such an inspirational person uh to uh, you know just speaking to you now it's just you know it's, it's feeling i can feel myself filling up with with that energy that you've got oh my goodness passion that you. you've got thank you. <laughs> no no it's great it's great to have that and and, and you know that's I what i want to do is just share my experiences and not be just be myself authentically myself.